Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Ryan Blair. He's the CEO and co-founder of Visalis. He is a serial entrepreneur, and he joins us now to offer his insights and advice as part of National Entrepreneurship Month. November has that designation, and we are certainly looking forward to his advice on how to get started and how to make sure you're a success once you do. And Ryan, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. How long have you been in the entrepreneurial game, and how did you get started? I had the seeds of it early on when my dad used to compensate me when I was a young kid uh, for pulling weeds. And I figured out that I could get other kids to help pull weeds, and I could pay them 50% of what I received. So, you know, I, I always had a bit of a hustle in me at a young age. And then when I was a kid, unfortunately, when I was about 13 years old, I lost my father uh, to drug addiction, and my family was uh, shifted into poverty. And I, I got to see a lot of entrepreneurship in poverty. It was just illegal entrepreneurship. And then, you know, when I was about 19 years old, I actually decided to start my first company, which was in the computer repair industry called 24-7 Tech. I'm now 37 years old, so what is that? That's uh, 18 years, and I've since started, invested in, and done billions of dollars worth of uh, transactions on the subject. Obviously, you've done different businesses over that time. What are the common threads about successful startups? What did you know, either from the get-go or shortly thereafter, that folks who are thinking about uh, starting their own business really need to know before they get started? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I can answer it really in two ways. Uh, one is how I look at it now as an investor, and then the other is, you know, the attributes that were necessary for me to start the various businesses that I've had. Starting there, I'll tell you that I get asked this question a lot. If you have tenacity, work ethic, you're willing to be a student, you surround yourself with the right people, you, you seek mentorship and the subjects of business, get people to invest in you, whether it be financially or give your, they give you your time, you're going to be successful. Luck plays a, a role in it, though, and that, you know, luck is your multiplier. So, you know, a lot of times people ask me, did, did I always know I'd become a millionaire? And the answer is, yeah, I knew I would, but I didn't know if it was going to take me my entire life to get there. You know, but I knew that if I applied, you know, the traits and the attributes and continued working on solving problems that provided value, that I would get there. Luck uh, and the good fortune of having some other great people involved in my businesses, you know, is the multiplier on that. And, and so I've, you know, become successful. Now, as an investor... I look at the, uh, we have a saying in our, our VC fund, we have about a $20 million fund, which is just myself and my co-founders' private capital that we invest in businesses that are inspiring to us. And we just always say we bet on the horse, meaning we just place our bets on the best entrepreneurs out there. We invest in them because those entrepreneurs will iterate to determine what the right industry is or what the right approach to the industry is or, or perhaps even you know, changing the business model downstream based on, you know, different conditions, things changed from when we first made our investment. So, you know, th those are really my answers to the question. One thing that's certainly cathartic to people who have struggled to find success or are worried about not succeeding is to know how somebody who has found great success like yourself was able to overcome some setbacks along the way. We've obviously heard about uh, your dad passing away and how that dramatically changed your life. But once you got into the business world, what's maybe a couple setbacks, hurdles, challenges, disappoint yeah, disappointments sure. that you encountered? I have them every day. You know, I, I wrote the book, Nothing to Lose, about the mindset of, you know, overcoming your obstacles and, and having that attitude like you have nothing to lose. And, you know, and that attitude served me well. Now, on the other side of that, you know, I have everything to lose. I've had a, a ton of setbacks, both personally. My mother was in a coma for two years during the rise of the success of my salad. You know, we literally went from zero to a billion in cumulative sales pretty quick. Secondly, I have a son with special needs. He has autism. So I, I understand the personal elements. And my advice to people dealing with issues, whether they be personal or professional, whether they be based on your circumstances or based on poor decisions, uh, believe me, I have, a pl I have plenty of those as well. My advice is you have to compartmentalize and you have to focus in each one of those compartments. Compartmentalization is a is a, a uh, you know something that they talk about in various uh, psychological studies where people will actually go through trauma by compartmentalizing. In the business world, your compartments are hourly, and you have 24 of them a day, and you have to apply some toward sleep, some toward personal health, some toward family, some toward family crises, some toward business crises, and but you can't basically let something one particular issue take all 24 channels that you have in a day, you know, all 24 hours. So my solution is 
it's a bit of time management, it's a bit of calendar management, and it's a bit of, of saying I'm going to make this amount of time for this, and then I'm going to do my very best to shut down all communication other than uh, my focus on this particular topic that I'm working on that is an obstacle or an adversity that I'm seeking to overcome. You know, and, and I've sure had, had a fair amount of them. We're talking with Ryan Blair. He is a serial entrepreneur, CEO, and co-founder of Visalis. And Ryan, I know another thing you believe in very deeply is mentorship. How did that work for you when you were a young entrepreneur? And how are you turning that around and helping some others uh, nowadays? My vehicle of mentorship is, you know, I love writing. It's always been my outlet. It's a bit therapeutic for me. So I write blogs. I write on my Facebook page. And I've uh, written a book called Nothing to Lose. So that's the way I generally mentor people. Sometimes people read my book right in. They may have a business plan that I like, or they may have, you know, an approach, or they may see my involvement. You know, I, I'm, I'm uh, involved in various charities that help out-risk youth, as I was one of those uh, kids. I'm really passionate about the subject, and also charities related to autism. So that's one of the ways people seek my mentorship. The way that I get mentorship, or actually I'll go back to before I had success, I would simply put myself in the same room with the people I needed access to. And the way that I would do that is I would network to them, literally triaging my way to figure out, you know, if there was a business that had an investor and I needed to talk to that investor, I go in and talk to the business. Maybe I'd even do business with them, or I'd find a way that perhaps that investor uh, had perhaps a charitable endeavor or a passion that I could uh, talk to. One, one of the founders of Sun Microsystems, for example, I read an article that he had written about thermonuclear regulation. It's a long story, but I'm a bit of a geek. And I wrote to him figured out his email address, sent about 20 different variations of it. Finally, he writes back and says, wow, it is rare that somebody actually uh, contacts me on this subject. And we built a relationship. And from there, I got mentorship. In short, my solution is, if you want a mentor, identify the mentor, and then find a way to provide value to that mentor or to be different. Stand out above the crowd. Everybody writes in and says, Ryan, will you help me? And, you know, I read the emails and I'm blessed to receive so many of them or to post, but I don't have the time to help millions of people that follow me, but I do have the time if somebody's engaged in a topic of interest or if somebody's engaged in a charity of interest or a business that I'm interested in, I'll make the time for that. So last, last piece of advice on the subject of mentorship, it's real easy to say that, hey, you don't have the time or these guys are unavailable. My advice is successful people make time. You just have to find a way to appeal to them and add value to them. About a minute or so left here. A couple of quick questions before we let you go, Ryan. Uh, first of all, in National Entrepreneurship Month, uh, a lot of people trying to figure out if this is the, the right jump for them. If they do have the drive, if they can find the right people, and they've got a relatively good idea for a business, what's the upside if it's done right? I'm sitting out here looking at uh, the ocean up in the Hollywood Hills, enjoying a life that I never dreamed possible, having time with friends and family, being able to give back and contribute, and having freedom to travel to to be able to take my son to a recital or, you know, or help the sons of less fortunate. So what's the upside? The upside is, you know, you have, you have freedom, you have financial freedom, you have family freedom, and you have freedom to do whatever you want to do and create whatever you want to create. I got to tell you, it is priceless. And very quickly, uh, we want to give you a chance to talk about your, your current business, Visalis. Tell our listeners more about it and what, how it could be of service to them. Yeah, we just bought back the company. So I sold the company in 2012 and just bought it back in a $143 million transaction about two months ago. Vitalis is most known for the Body by Vi 90 Day Challenge, which helps people get fit and lose weight. We just launched the Project 10 Challenge. We're in the business of acquiring a few companies uh, recently uh, in the consumer product space. So if you just go to Vi.com, it's real simple, Vi.com. If you want to learn more about our products, there's a telephone up there. And if you want to purchase my book, just go to RyanBlair.com, and there's links from there. Ryan, congratulations on your success, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you. I'm back to work. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ryan Blair, CEO and co-founder of Visalis. He's a serial entrepreneur. Again, RyanBlair.com for the book, Vi.com, to learn more about the work that Visalis does. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.